Hi, I'm Paul Whiffin from AtSpace, and today we thought we'd give you a bit of insight in how to get a traditional built house, a block and brick house, airtight. Okay, we're inside a block and built brick house. <laughs> and the inside leaf here is block work. One thing people don't realise is block work is actually permeable. What means that air can actually get through it at a low sort of rate. So we've got to try and get this wall tight, airtight. Uh, the next big point is, is the pointing up. Make sure the brickies, he'll be on price or on day rate, make sure they point up nice and neat, all the joints. This wall, particularly up here, is no good. Look at these knobs in here. It makes an absolute nightmare for the plasterers to overcome. So make sure this detail is correct. To get this to airtight, we can just either put a parge coat, which is a sand and cement sort of mix, about 10 to 12 mil. That creates good sound absorption and also good air tightness over the entire wall. Then you can put your plasterboards on that. Or we can apply a liquid membrane. These are becoming very popular. The intelligent membranes, passive purple. We've grabbed this off Adam and we've stuck this on the wall in this little area here. This is a VCL, a vapor control layer. Um, so it creates an airtight barrier, but also lets moisture through if it needs to. So that's on there. Uh, the third option is the traditional, which is dot and dab. So if you're not protecting the wall, you're solely reliant on the plasterboard. So there's a correct way of doing that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. This is best practice. If you're going to do some dot and dabbing for air tightness and you're not prepared to seal the wall, obviously pointing up needs to be pretty good. But when it comes to dot and dabbing, you want a continuous bead of adhesive, just like Jim's just done here. That basically creates a complete air seal around this external wall here. Um, what you're going to see here, we're also going to create an airtight barrier around each socket. You'll see in the next frame that we'll address that with some adhesive around there. That way we don't get any air leakage coming through the sockets. There's always a tiny amount coming through the grommets and everything else in here, but you can obviously add like a fire putty, like a Hilti fire putty in there if you choose to. Depends on how tight you want your home. Also, another quick note is that we got a 15 mil gap at the bottom of the board here. Just raised, just to stop any moisture that may fall on the floor, doesn't travel up the board. In regards to air tightness, expandable foam or anything down here, in this little gap here will assist. Okay, the next area is cavity closers. These are uh, these bits of plastic that has a bit of insulation on there to assist with the cold bridging detail. These need to be sealed up with mastic or a product like the Passive Purple we've got that keep it nice and airtight. That goes into the actual cavity, seals and, keep, and keeps a continuous sort of air barrier around there. That's important. Most builders just throw them and leave them in. Okay, we've covered the uh, cavity closers and sealed those up. The next sort of area to look at are the joists. These have been put in sort of a traditional sort of method where they get built into the block work wall. Um, we've applied one of the passive purple sort of membranes around here to assist with the movement because wood shrinks. So even though you've pointed it up nicely, make sure you get a nice seal going around each of the joists. Um, here's one over here that hasn't had it applied. Looks pretty good at the moment, but already you can see it's shrinking and that'll create a form of sort of air leakage. By doing it this traditional method, you have to build the block work up and then put the joists on first and then slip the block works down. That's okay. It's just a bit of a nightmare when you come to these joists here that run parallel with the wall to try and protect this wall here. So what you end up having is a void between the ceiling and the floor between here that a lot of air leakage occurs. If you use something like a uh, joist hanger, let me show you what they look like. This is a joist hanger. This would get fitted on the external wall and then you can slot your joists in. It's much easier to fit these and protect the wall between the ceiling and the floor, that little void, by using these. Okay, also be careful of any sort of first fixed pipe work and electrical going through the walls. Here's one that we've just sealed up here. So obviously detail when you've got steels or different interfaces or different materials, make sure that they're all sealed around there. Look, I've got the gaps up the top here and everywhere here that we need looking at. 
So yeah, plenty of detail. So best thing to do is go around the perimeter walling and just double check everything for any penetrations to seal up. Okay, the next area to look at really are any of the wet rooms or anywhere that we've got water coming in and electric coming in. The main problems do tend to be the wet rooms. So this looks like a main bathroom. So anything coming through the floor or the ceiling will need to have a seal. So it looks like we've got a bath going in here. We've got cold and water feeds coming in. Make sure these are sealed in the floor. Stop anything in the void coming through. We've got a waste pipe here. You can see that's being sealed. If you're using spandle foam, make sure it's a robust one. Um, apply water first before you spray it on there. Um, you can look over here. We've got a soil pipe. Again, these tend to come up to the toilets. People put a nice boxing in and then obviously we come and carry out an air tightness test and we've got all air really leaking through the floor void because these are all pretty much roughly cut out. So seal it there, it doesn't matter about the actual uh, boxing in. So get that right, I'll sort that out. Any lights coming through the walls, don't quite know what this may be. It might be a light on the wall, might be a mirror or something happening there. Uh, you've obviously got the lights coming through the ceiling and the extractors. If you're using spotlights, which looks like it's going to be, make sure they have a gasket. The LEDs are pretty airtight as well, so make sure they're all nice and tight. Also the ventilation, which as you know, we seal up, but make sure these are fitted properly. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found some of these tips helpful. We're gonna come back to this very site in six to eight weeks. As the site progresses, there's other areas of air leakage that we need to look at. So see you then.